So the history. It's actually in some ways the most important of all our festivals. But it's not a festival that seems to get much airtime amongst the Jewish community of the world. Maybe it's because there's not a lot of ritual associated with it. Maybe it's a very short festival. It's only two days. Not quite sure exactly how it fell off a lot of people's maps. But if there are the three regalim, the shalosh regalim, the three festivals in which Jewish people once upon a time went to Jerusalem, being Pesach, Shavuot, and Sukkot, this is the middle festival. So it obviously does carry a lot of weight. It's one of the only festivals that's mentioned within the Torah. So what is it, and when did it begin? 3,300 years ago, the Jewish people left Egypt. We left Egypt as a slave nomadic group, traveling with it into the desert with a leader by the name of Moses, Moshe Rabbeinu. The first stop after Egypt, after the splitting of the sea, was Mount Sinai. 49 days after we left, we were gathered there at a mountain, and there had been a question put to the people before we gathered at the mountain. Do you want a Torah? Do you want a code in which to live by? Would you like an opportunity that has not been presented to mankind before? Now the Talmud tells us that for the sake of justice and for the sake of equality, there was a series of, well, this is a Midrashic story, but there was a series of requests put to all the different nations of the world via their ministering angel as to whether or not anyone else was interested in adopting the Torah. And when the different ministering angels asked What's in it? Whether it was the angel of Canaan or the angel of Moab or the other ancient nations of the world, they responded that they didn't want this code, they didn't want these laws, they didn't want this dogma in their life. It would challenge their status quo, whether it was the way they interpreted the laws of killing or whether it was the way they interpreted the laws of stealing. They didn't want change. The Jewish people responded, Na'aseh v'nishma. We will do and then we will go on to learn and explore for the rest of our lives what it is that we're doing as a ritual. And from their custom would become spiritual practice. So 3,300 years ago, the question was put, would you like the Torah? Would you like a code of conduct? Something that will completely change you from being a group of slaves that have gone free to a people with a purpose. And the people said, yes, please. We will do and we will listen. We will do and we will explore the deeper learnings of this teaching. With that, Moses steps foot on Mount Sinai. And this mountain was just another ordinary desert mountain. At first, that's what it seemed. But this mountain had been selected. It wasn't tall. It wasn't short. It wasn't wide. It was just another hill in the desert. It had no plants. It had no vegetation. It's unidentifiable. And we're going to explore what that means tomorrow. Hashem said, once you step foot and walk up that mountain, Moses, I want to ensure that no one else walks on this mountain because it will be temporarily holy. It will be a place that we are going to present the people with the Ten Commandments and the whole Torah. Shavuot morning, after three days of preparation, the people actually were ready. Moses goes up the mountain, and on that day, there is a loud, booming voice. Now, this was not a voice heard by one person. This was not a prophecy that one person heard and then told the people. This was something that millions of people gathered 3,300 years ago witnessed. Men, women, and children were all present there, soul in a body, conscious of what was going on when they heard a booming voice. And what was different about this booming voice was there was no echo, something we'll explore tomorrow. And with the first words, they heard, I am Hashem your God. I am the Lord that took you out of Egypt. That was establishment. That was Hashem saying, this is me. Commandment number one, I took you out of Egypt. There was no intermediary. There was nothing else. I am the creator. And number two was, you should not have any other God. At this point, the Jewish people actually began to beg and scream that Moses should actually stop this great voice and rather tell them the rest by himself. The reason being because every time they heard this unbelievable expression of energy, which is the voice of Hashem, 
whatever that means. I can't describe that to you. you. If we could never understand what this supernatural, above everything we have come to understand in this natural system called the universe, we don't understand what it means to have an expression from the Creator. But it knocked the living daylights out of the people. It knocked the soul out of the body. And there had to be a resurrection each time. Soul coming back, much like when we sleep, but a completely non-relaxing experience. And so the people said, Moses, we get it. We have experienced it, but please tone it down. It's taking too much of a toll. We can't handle it. They physically could not handle this, this absolute quantum leap going backwards and forwards, completely passing out and being part of the uh, uh, spiritual universe where no physicality exists and then being brought back into the physical space only to be knocked out again. And Moses would then go on to say the next eight commandments. 49 days later... 40 days later, sorry, Moses was meant to come down. There'd been a miscalculation, a miscalculation of exactly when he was coming. And the morning came and he hadn't come down. And people start wondering, well, he went up without water and without food. Maybe he's died. And if he's died, who's going to lead us? And this is the problem with having mortal leaders. This is the problem with having people. They die. We need. And very quickly, panic set in. And panic was harnessed by a group of people, rebel rousers, who said, perhaps we can go a different way. We'll create something called the golden calf. The golden calf was created by a group of people who said, let us create a non-mortal human being, a non-mortal being who isn't going to die and use a special piece of parchment that was used in Egypt to bring up the bones of Joseph from the Nile River, a little miraculous piece of paper with the name of God, throw it into the fire, which has melted all the gold, and in turn, a golden calf came out. And we'll explore what all that means another time, not even tomorrow, because it's not really to do with the story of Shavuot, but I'd like to place the different stories for you. God says to Moses, we just did this thing. 40 days ago, we just told the people you cannot have another God. And all of a sudden, they've got this physical image, this this living golden calf. And they're worshipping it as some sort of intermediary because they don't want a relationship directly with me and they don't have a trust in you. I'm going to destroy the world. I'm going to destroy the people. And that is when Moses actually comes down the mountain with the two tablets and he smashed the two tablets. And that puts a stop to everything. What would happen from there is Moses would go on to beg for forgiveness for the people. There would be a tshuva. There'd be a process of repenting, of changing, of recovering. And then Moses would go back up the mountain a third time, and this time to collect the second set of tablets. So that just places the first set of two tablets, the breaking, and the second set. Let's now come back to Shavuot. Before any of that happened, Moses went up. And God said the first two commandments. And the people heard, and then Moses said the second eight. The, the, the last eight, I should say. What was it that they received? Shavuot is not just a celebration of Ten Commandments. Shavuot is not just a celebration of receiving the Torah. Shavuot is an unbelievable celebration of a change in the universe. For the first 2,000, almost 500 years of existence, People were in the dark. People tried to identify their spirituality. People had to make discovery. People had different religions. Avraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov and their wives and some of their kids adopted monotheism because they discovered monotheism. They had never been taught monotheism. This was the first time that a group of people would be told, here is a spiritual code of life. If you want to make this world a more spiritual place, if you'd like to fuse and merge physicality and spirituality, if you'd like the highest spheres and the lowest spheres to become one, well, here's a method. They're called mitzvot, the 613 mitzvot, often translated as commandments. But as I like to actually refer to, based on the Kabbalistic teachings that are really highlighted in Hasidut, mitzvah has the same root as tzavta. Chibur, connection. And therefore, these are not 613 commandments. These are 613 methods of connection. You can do what you want. You can choose that the Torah is a dogmatic legal system there to govern the people. Or you can see it as a spiritual way of life. 613 methods of meaningful life. 
613 ways of connecting the physical with the spiritual. It's totally up to how you interpret Nishma. Naaseh we will do, Nishma we will learn. You can learn it one way, you can learn it the other, or you can learn it as both. This Shavuot, go to Shul, find some time, just do something to explore what is your interpretation of the mitzvot. Do you want it to be a legal system that governs the way you live, which is perfectly fine, and you're doing the traditions for tradition's sake? Or perhaps you'd like to do the traditions because you feel that there's some deeper meaning and spirituality in your action. Both are correct, because ultimately what the Torah called for on Shavuot was action. Shavuot is the festival in which we go from being slaves and going free to being a free people living with purpose. And for the subsequent 3,300 years, which is where we're at today in the year 2013, we are a people with purpose. Our purpose? To make the world a more spiritually conscious place, filled with goodness, doing our mitzvot to improve this world. If you liked that video, hit the subscribe button and notification bell below for hours of the best Jewish content online.